Hello everybody. In this video, I'll be using a variety of techniques, combining them all together to work on the hull of Brave Sir Galahad. Um, it involves some wet blending, some layering, edging, weathering powders. Oh boy. Um, so this is one of those videos where I'm more showing the, uh, the process and combination versus those videos where I break down an individual technique. So something a little bit different but this is more in the direction I want to start going with these videos in the future. I'll still stop and do beginner level videos uh, zoning in on a particular technique, but this time we're combining everything into one powerful weapon of creativity. So let's get into it. Let's have a look at old Sir Galahad's hull. Assess the angles, decide on my approach for this attack, this attack of tonal dominance. What tones? We've got some white, some black, olive flesh, gun corpse brown, thornwood green, mahogany, and gnarls green. These are uh, from three different brands, but seeing is believing. I've just given myself the option. I have some tan, brown tones, trying to keep it blanchy. Or, you know, blanchy is a, is a phrase, we'll use that. And then green is going to be the other half of the hull. Of course, I'll make it very muted by uh, mixing those browns into it. I've given myself some options. I may not need all of these colors, but as I go along and it's, it's all kind of touch and go, I'll decide where uh, what ingredients fit best for the situation. So for now, I'm just throwing down some olive flesh. And although it's called flesh, it's just a great ivory tone. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the color Vallejo Buff, which is a yellowed out ivory. But if I wanted just a nice even ivory, all of flesh would that would be the ticket I would take to ride. And now I'm just wet blending some gun corpse brown in there, just a neutral tan. Remember to maintain that surface contact, sideways sweeping motions using a large brush, trying to affect as much of that area as as one time at one time as I can. Pardon me. Um, and yeah, just you know, gradually adding thicker and thicker amounts. It's going to take a little bit of time to cover over this black, but I also wanted to bring it up from black to maintain, you know, get a little bit of texture. I wanted that, that hand-painted look, you know, show just a few brush strokes. I have battle damage worked onto the model as well, so this will just kind of add to that rough-and-tumble look, and, you know, that's characteristic of a lot of John Blanche's artwork. And now it's starting to get, you know, I'm getting more coverage as it's uh, drying. I'm getting more, more layers, getting rid of all that black tone. I also had a decision to make at a certain point. Half of this is going to be green, and it'll be separated in a castle wall pattern. But I have to decide, is the base coat of this this hull green or is it ivory? You know, was that that separation painted green over ivory or ivory over green? These are the deep thoughts that we have along the way. Bring Sir Galahad to life. You can see I'm mixing a tan in with that gnarls green, the gun corpse brown, so I get a nice, you know, muted kind of uh, moldy looking green. Kind of reminds me of moss growing on on stones yeah we'll give this side the same treatment as before you know i'm interpreting the light source the same way generally i want to bring up things to their brightest point uh right at the top of that hatch you know as the uh the curvature and dimension kind of leads all the light up to this certain point it's catching on those shoulder vents that you know right where the the hatch would fold up on the main body and those little side flanges of course we'll call them flanges and sure I might be undoing some of the work some of that uh, those rusty tones it's all right I'm doing things uh, step by step for recording purposes so ordinarily I'd work things up a little bit differently and I would save that step the uh, the rusting and weathering until after everything was painted, but it is what it is. I can easily reapply it later. So here it is now. I've got my 
sides chosen, just uh, roughly rendered. I want to go in and start refining things. The wet blending phase is almost over. It, it may come back into play, but mostly what I'm leaning on here is blending, you know, bringing things up with those thinner layers. And, you know, refining some of the shadows as well. And see, yeah, I'm doing a little bit of wet blending, but I'm also bringing things up to a much um, brighter level and a much smaller area, you know, kind of uh, tightening things up. I was talking about leading things up to a point of graduation at the top of that, that door on the hull. So that's what I'm aiming to do. But the dance of blades is a delicate dance, and we must weave back and forth. Pulling a little bit more brown into the shadows, cutting, you know, making things more refined, making sure that that shadow meets up right next to that highlighted area. And now I'm starting to add those crenellations and crevices, just uh, very carefully outlining this castle pattern and of course you know controlling the uh, the volume making sure I'm painting it in there with the same colors as as I go up and get to those lighter areas I'll be pulling from a different color of paint just like that <laughs> sorry that's a little bit blurry but I'll drag it into focus in a moment This part is not that exciting. If you've seen one crenellation, you've seen them all. So we'll keep adding to that. There we go. Looks like our painter has found his center again. And yeah, you can see I'm, I'm using a large brush here, but I'm pressing very lightly, and the brush is fairly new, so it's still holding a sharp point. So I'm, I'm able to get a lot done with that. Just a nice, sharp, synthetic brush. I know it may look years old, but I swear I, I opened it recently. Now that we have that, all those crenellations in place and things have been refined, with a little bit of layering, we can go in there for uh, another pass of refinement, getting finer and finer. See, I've gotten a fresh, fresher brush this time. But again, you know, just pushing that contrast, pulling the peaks of these gradients up just a little bit higher. I licked my brush right there. Whenever you see it fly off screen, I'm usually licking the brush to remove the paint and then use it like a sponge. Force of habit. Um, you can also quickly just clean your brush out. And there we go, dropping some edge highlights in place. And you know, just upward facing angles. You don't have to go crazy highlighting from from every possible uh, direction. And here and there I'll, I'll add breaks in the line. I will you know, raise the brush up, kind of add skips. I'm sure I have some battle damage carved into this model, but I can also paint some more superficial damage onto it as well. But yeah, just remain, remember to keep that brush at a nice 45 degree angle. And yeah, just trying to, to meet that those edges just at that perfect parallel and even when I'm blending it it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth just in the way that I, when I was starting this off with a wet blend intentionally leaving some brush strokes and irregularities in there I can do the same with my layering as long as I get that semi smooth gradient you know it's, it's as long as it leads up to a point of accumulation and, and it just makes sense the the gradient that is and yeah, I'll do the same with the olive flesh and touches of white on the opposite side yep same as same as before just picking out those upper edges roughing things up here and there a little stylish battle damage some of it's there some of it's just painted on it's all an illusion I pick out those rivets as well I'm happy with the progressions that I have. Now what I'll do is take 
a chunk of um, a piece of sponge, place that in some tweezers, and just kind of lightly tap that here and there just to add to the uh, chipping and removed paint here and there. And, you know, if those, if my crenellations aren't sharp enough, well, that's a good area for battle damage. Just scrape it away and people will actually think it looks better that way. And they won't know that you've made a mistake. That'll be our secret. But be tasteful about it. A little bit can go a long way. It's it's one of those effects that is fun, fast, and easy. And you can quickly just, oh, ah, if one of those is good, well, 50 is going to be 50 times better. But we must practice a little bit of temperance. A true berserk knows when to go berserk. So after I've made some more superficial paint chips, I'll take some black and mix in some of that mahogany. And just very tastefully in some areas, I want the paint to appear that it's been entirely removed. Um, just make sure some of these marks are a little bit larger because you're going to be painting around these marks. You'll be highlighting the lower edge so it appears that the light is catching and also where space allows you'll be placing um, a touch of silver into some of those spaces to make that that raw metal exposed um, but before I get to that I'm going to go back and just add some finer edge highlights again you know picking out those, those lower edges the rivets just kind of making everything lighter and brighter and once I'm happy with these progressions and these, these fine edges, I want to go back and reapply some shadows just to make sure things are, are unified. I'm maintaining that gradient. It's going to be a very, very thin filter. Yeah, you can see just how thin that it's a wash light consistency or thinner. But I'm just sweeping in the same direction, just kind of working that, that general progression you know I want to leave that brighter area across the shoulders you know leave leave that untouched and sweep some of the shadows just away from that kind of larger indiscriminate strokes taking care of business and we'll drop some water down paint into those vents as well just to make sure that those are going to be as dark as I like and there that is all dried up see it's outlined some of the rivets and just added a little more depth and unity overall. And now, after layering uh, shading on top, we pull some of the highlights back out. Take care of a lot of those finer spots. And again, wherever I can, covering less and less of that area. Obviously, I, I want a pretty uh, harsh edge highlight below where all these uh, chips of paint are. So once that was all finished and I had my highlights in place, it was time for some black lining. Just, I mean, there's a lot of panel lines here. There are other ways to do this with, with panel liners and such, but I'm a little old fashioned and I just paint them in. Just hold your brush at an angle, you know, kind of lead the paint along instead of using it like a pencil to just draw directly into the line. And if you're leading it along, the bristles will conform to that, that groove that you're dragging them into. And just water your paint down Sometimes you have to go back for a, a second pass if it isn't uh, dark enough. You could interchange this with the the highlighting level as well. You know, everything for me is just touch and go, and I, I go back and forth. But uh, maybe to avoid some mistakes, if these black lines get out of hand, you would want to save those upper highlights until after you do this lower area. Now that that was all taken care of, it was time to add some gunmetal gray from Vallejo. I like the Vallejo metallics, they have a very finely ground pigment, uh, very reflective and easier to work with than most other brands that I've, I've tried. haven't tried them all, but I've uh, been sticking with the Vallejo metallics for a while. But yeah, just very tastefully, if, if I can't fit any silver into those, those black spaces, well that's fine. You know, just, just a little bit. It's all about uh, subtleties. And following that, I'll get a little bloodstone from P3. Um, water it down. I want a very washy consistency. I'll 
almost add too much water to this. Here, I can show you on the old uh, cube of learning might be a little used up, but you can see how just how thin that is. Barely any, barely any paint. You know, working in subtleties, and what I want to do is just add a little, some rust, you know, streaking down from the, those spikes, and anywhere where moisture would gather and accumulate, that's where I'm going to place a very thin layer of this bloodstone. Um, you, you could do this with a weathering powder, and I do add weathering powder to this later, but I know that not everyone has a weathering powder, so I wanted to show you you can produce uh, rusty effects with just acrylic paint as well. I've done it on the past. Nobody, nobody knows. You know, nobody knows whether I use powder or uh, acrylics. I like the powder lately because it's just has a different look up close in person and kind of adds a certain level of filtering. But for learning purposes and demonstration, I think it's important to show this that it can be achieved with bloodstone. And those holes I'm dragging it down from, that's where a handle will be attached later. So I can make sure to lay down a heavier amount there. And after a few uh, very thin layers now, it's starting to accumulate. Yeah, and give me that, that just that look that I was after. Not too bad following that stage. I just wanted to do yet another pass of highlights and this is the fun part when all of that work and going back and forth between layering and highlighting and shading and highlighting back up this is when it all starts to come together riveting I know just want to sit back and watch the action the paint is drying the lines are precise what a great day I'm also taking this opportunity to add uh, another uh, good amount of superficial scratches as well. See, I'm just kind of throwing some around on the hull. Little scratches. And then just because I used weathering powder on the rest of the model, and why not add more layers? We'll get a little bit of this secret weapon weathering powder involved. Just combining it with a little bit of water and placing a small amount of that in all the areas that I had laid the uh, bloodstone down on top of. Yep, just make sure you're placing it in the crevices and just kind of letting gravity do the work for you. You add a great amount of water to this and it's going to sink into those crevices. And voila! There he be, brave Sir Galahad, or at least his mighty chassis. I'm giving the rest of the armor plates the same treatment, but for sake of uh, speed I think it's fair enough just to show one piece of the armor. Everything else gets the same treatment. Um, aside from some free hands, which we'll be doing more videos on in the future. Thank you for tuning in. Appreciate the support. I hope that this was uh, entertaining and informative for you. Infotainment. That is the new uh, hot trend in the culture. Thank you for tuning in. Um, things will be changing going forward. I'm moving to a new house, setting up a new studio. More announcements on that soon. Uh, until then, though, keep painting and get your teeth wet. Hi, gang. <clears throat> uh.